Okay, session is recording. <laughs> I'm still trying to find the setting to add you as a co-host. Um, I can always uh, create and invite you guys as a host. That is also a good option. But it's interesting because if I go into room creator and if I want to add you, it says add co-owners to this room, select mm -hmm. a new creator. And then I look for select a new creator mm -hmm. in the settings, but there isn't any. Huh. Do you have to do you have to be part of the same party? Add this party to your party. New notification. Let's see. Oh, that's me. Okay, messages. One thing about the menu, I don't know how I got this to look like what it is now, but actually I'm not You're looking not? at my wrist to see the menu. It's it's just right in front of me. Maybe you oh, can right. you can view that like Press the menu button so on your this controller way, to detach. You don't, yep. you don't by mistake. Mm -hmm. on, on your controller? If you look at the bottom, there's a little white thing that says uh, um, press the menu button on your controller to detach. There should be, for me, it's the uh, B button. Okay. But, uh. Yep. Let me see. B closes it for me. And then. Uh, oh, yeah. It's Y or B on the quest. Okay, I give up, I think. If you <laughs> want to create a new room, Jason. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, I'll create I can one take and, that option. and invite yep. you. All right, give me a okay. minute. Uh, what room is this called, by the way? Uh, UCL Osaka, I think. But the uh, type of room? In the what, meantime. What was it called? Um, The lake. The lake, the lake. I think. Okay, I'll create the... a lake. Is, yeah, got it. I'll create, I'll say UCL Osaka 2. Okay, in the meantime, I will drink a cup of coffee. <laughs> Very <quick. laughs> Just give me a second. <laughs> okay, let's see. Do I to invite your party? Yes, invite. You've created a custom room. Your room is invite only until you decide to publish it. You can name and publish this room by pressing this room on your watch. All right. Hey, all here. Oh, hey, that, that worked <laughs> I think very well. <laughs> all right, cool. Yeah. Cool, all I right. I think we were here before. I feel so. like it, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's try this and see if I can't get my use. Here we go. All right. <laughs> what is that? It's my drawing gun. The maker pen. Cool. Yeah. So let's see if it let's see if like I can. It looks like a <laughs> <laughs> Can I eat it? <laughs> you can try. <laughs> All right. Let me see if I can't make you guys moderators as well, so you can draw and stuff. Okay. Let's see if it works for me. Settings. Moderation. Rooms, permissions. Here we go. Co owner. There we go. You guys should right. both yeah. have invites to co ownership, yeah. Okay. And hopefully you should yes. have uh, ownership now so you can use your Back to the creator tools. Mm, I get the message you don't have permission. Oh, Again. still no? Hmm, okay. Let me yeah. try. D did you accept the moderatorship? Ah, uh, wait. Um, let's see. Maybe I didn't. Might have to go to, like, this room and then... Uh... Okay. Yeah. It should work now. Yes. There we yeah, go. Yeah, all right. Cool. So Oops. how do you guys use the tools that you mentioned? So on your menu, like, there's a backpack. It says access oh, your stuff. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now I see. Mm -hmm. Use and feedback. Okay, cool. 
And I think the maker pen itself has some. Oh, here we yeah, go. Yeah, once you there we go. I got it. Turn right. it around. Yeah, you see the menu. Open palette. No. Um, where is it? Maybe it's open palette. Gadgets. Here we go. Oops. No. Come on, maker gun. You can do it. Open palette. Gadgets. Mm -hmm. Props. Gadgets. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I see. I should have screen sharing enabled, but this is this is horrible design user interface wise. It's not too great, which is perfect for uh, yeah. content. Yeah. Props. Creative. Here we go. All right. Okay. Desktop screen nice. sharing. Lots of options. Hey, there we go. Delete if I do this. Oh, nice. It should delete, right? And then I can create something cool. Two ribbon shapes. Cool. All right. All so let's, see. let's do this. Okay. Nice. Input. Can I see myself? How do I look? I, I <laughs> hey, there we go. <laughs> okay. There yeah. we go. Okay, good stuff. <laughs> cool. And now I can bring up theoretically the joint notes document. Let's see if this works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. And now if I face the document somehow, let's see if this works. All right, and bring my keyboard over. Oh, that's okay. Theoretically, I can now type and take notes. I just received a message from Korai. He's sharing his rec room. I delete. Let me see. Yeah, Jason, you also received this. Ah, message. okay. Yeah. Okay. Can I we, will uh, add Korai. You, okay. We also we also had a message from. Uh, no, that's something else. Sorry. Okay, I'll I'll go ahead and add Korai. It's Korai Kamak. Okay, I'll I'll do that. I'll do it. Okay. Let's see. While cool. That's nice. If I go back to here. If I go back to Paul. I don't know if you can hear my daughter in the background. Yep. But... Oh yeah. There we go, that's a little bit better. Now if I zoom in, let's uh, just make the text bigger here. There we go. Can you guys read that okay? Yeah, but yes. a The compression is little, yeah. But, me, me, do I mispronounce your name? Mehrasa? Mehrasa? Yeah, that, no, that's correct. Yeah, Mehrasa, yeah, or Mehrasa too. Make it Mehrasa? closer to the actual <laughs> pronunciation. <laughs> so Mera, I was going to suggest um, if you stay close to the this oh, way. Okay. Yeah, the, yeah, the compression is pretty bad. It's the same yeah. for me, but I think you can see it better this way. Yeah, oh, by that's the way, true. Can I, that's can, right. Do you mind if I ask where does your name come from? It's a Persian name, so I'm from Iran. It's a Persian. Okay, Chetori Dadash. <laughs> oh my gosh, you can speak some <laughs> yeah. you, No, no, you it's just the few words, few words. I'm originally from Turkey, so we are neighbors. I mean, I, I don't know oh. if you if you were born in Iran, but uh, yeah. I was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. Good connections. Yep. All right, let's see how... Let's see if oh. I go into messages again. I'm trying to see if yes. Korai... He's joining us or no? Okay. Let me send him a message one more time. Okay. If I say... What, do you know what his name is? No. Yes. I edit him on uh, Rec Room, but the thing is, he's not accepting it. I'm worried that he just, you know, closed the entire thing and 
maybe waiting for my message. I'm uh, sending an email to him okay. real, real quick. Good morning. I just... I just... Edit you to my friend list. Looking forward to have you in the rec room. Con. Sent. And all set. Cool. Okay. If he joins, I will. I will let you guys know about this. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Uh, shall we get started? Sure. All right. What is our first first 45 minutes? Um, it says here introductions and rec room exploration. I think we have been doing some rec room <laughs> exploration. <laughs> yep. So. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, we can we can take a walk if you like after after the introductions or so. Okay. So. Yeah, let's start with the introductions. Who wants to go first? I Jason. can. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Or Minasa. Yeah, after you. Minasa, go no, ahead. Either one. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so I just told you my name and you pronounced it correctly, Merasa or Mehrasa. I'm from Iran and I've been in Japan for the past about seven years now. Um, oh, wow. I came as a graduate student like Jason and we're now working at the Cyber Media Center both. Um, I officially belong to a neighboring lab but I work with people uh, where Jason is affiliated with. So yeah, we, we basically <laughs> are colleagues in the same um, building on the same floor. Are, are you mm -hmm. at, the, at work today or are you connecting from home, Jason? Yep, I'm in the office. So room 570. Okay, cool. Cool. So a few meters away from me now, <laughs> <laughs> but joined in VR. <laughs> so yeah, my Marissa, background you're also is one of the professors, right? Uh, Sorry. Yeah, I'm an assistant professor. Um, I'm employed for a research project, so I, my job is basically to work on that. But I also am interested in uh, XR in education. That's what my background is in, actually. So I used to be an English teacher back in Iran, and I did my master's in teaching English as a second language. So, um, But yeah. I ended up being in the Graduate School of Information Science and Technology at Osaka University. So that's how I, I know that this bunch of people, including Jason, and I'm interested in technology enhanced learning basically and VR is definitely one of my areas of interest so mm -hmm. that's how I'm here today nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah so I actually know both of you guys so kind of maybe you wanna <laughs> <laughs> okay maybe okay uh, here's my introduction my name is Khan Khan Akshit uh, I'm an associate professor in the University College London um, I joined UCL like in January 2021 so before oh, that, really? I spent like six, seven years in the States. Uh, I was working for a company called NVIDIA, which you probably know of. Uh, I was working as a senior research scientist. I helped co-founding a research group there. Um, before that, I was in Turkey. I complete my, I obtained my PhD from Koç University in Istanbul. So I got my master's degree in uh, Arvete Aachen in Germany. Um, I had few inter internships in various different places like um, like um, Netherlands, Philips Research and Disney Research in, in Switzerland. So my main research focus is m mostly on uh, virtual reality and augmented reality applications. I build displays and specifically I build, build like computational displays. Nowadays I'm more interested in uh, computer generated holography. Uh, which is a means to up this game basically the visuals hopefully will be looking more realistic uh, in the future so that's what 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 I'm up to uh, yeah and that's a brief introduction about myself mm -hmm. cool hey welcome Thank you. Hi, Korai. really nice to see you hello hello can you hear me right now yeah we yes. can hear you yeah. yeah, hello, sorry for uh, misunderstanding, so I was late, sorry about that. Yeah, no problem, no problem, we just got started. Uh, so, so basically, I'm correct. Uh, from, I'm doing my master's degree at Koch University right now, and uh, nearly finishing it. Uh, I'm mostly working on computational displays, 
so basically we are working on a new uh, next generation uh, computer generated holography uh, trying to uh, acquire the best visual uh, genial 3d representation of the uh, computer generated uh, contacts okay very good so nice to meet you nice, nice to meet you glad to see thank you, you. thank you yeah. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, Hello. I think Cry, I, I'm you're the only person uh, I don't know, but <laughs> uh, my name is Jason Orlowski. <laughs> I'm a colleague of uh, Merasa at Osaka University and a good friend of Khan from several years ago. Uh, I work in augmented yeah, yeah. and virtual reality and uh, also in eye tracking. And yeah, I've been in Japan uh -huh. for almost 10 years now, but I'll be moving to Augusta oh. University to uh, start uh, a group, uh, an interactive group there and uh, that's also where i grew up um when i was young so it'd be going back home but yeah nice <laughs> to meet you you're still young <laughs> <laughs> when i was super young <laughs> you can run away and <laughs> rescue yes. yourself from this <laughs> 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 just kidding <laughs> cool. so Korai, we were also talking about the agenda that we have from before um yeah, I think we mostly covered the first item. Uh, mm -hmm. Potential, there's more to say. Um, so, like we have introductions, and we were searching for things to do in rec room, basically looking into this room and so on. So there's there's more here. Jason, should we mm -hmm. should we proceed with the next item, or like shall we like maybe ask a few more questions to each other about? the research that each one of us is conducting maybe just yeah. to trigger more conversations I'm, I'm just yeah yeah it sounds good um maybe we can go around and talk about like one of our let's say more interesting or vr related projects and have some discussions yeah i think this is a good idea um Hi. let me let me suggest asking marissa first would you like to okay. uh, introduce you introduce us one of one of your projects uh, that that you would like to share with us? Sure, um, nothing quite big yet, but I bought a few Quest two headsets last year with an internal budget I got because I was interested in using uh, VR in educational contexts. So far, since I ha I don't teach my own classes, I haven't used them all like a, as one set in a like classroom size with a classroom size population yet but I've been experimenting with using them with a small group of students from another university in Japan in another prefecture Okayama University so mm -hmm. they've been exploring using another app Engage if you have heard of Engage VR and um, right now I think since maybe last week or so we have started exploring Mozilla Hub's you oh, know yeah. that's a browser-based yeah they are uh, environment and thinking of the classroom application I think something that's uh, more flexible you could use on a PC on various like cr it's cross-platform is more feasible for the classroom so mm -hmm. I think for a while now we'll stick to Mozilla hubs and if you enter hubs on the headset it's quite immersive just like rec room is mm -hmm. or other similar apps I've also um, like explored quite a few others including um, alt space VR if you know of looks pretty mm -hmm. much like rec room so we we had once our like sig forum uh, held in uh, twice actually so far in alt space VR and um, what else well I'm in the beginning stages, so <laughs> I don't have any particular research results to share with you. But so far, I think if you want to take it to the classroom, one thing to be cautious about is that many people can get VR sick quite easily. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> the headsets so far are not quite as comfy, even though newer ones are much lighter compared to older models. But still, many people find it uncomfortable, yeah. especially over longer stretches of time. Okay. So that's what I have observed so far. Is everyone feeling okay right now, oh, by the way? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. I felt a little Some sick during the tutorial yesterday, though. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of movement <laughs> around. <laughs> and somehow I can't get to teleport. I can only walk, but not teleport. Um, don't know. Maybe I, I don't know the controllers. The okay. okay. Um, 
Merifa, I would like to mention something real quick. Uh, I read an article yeah. yesterday about Rec Room, and they were yeah. they were saying that there will be an Android application coming up very soon. So interesting. If you want to have people with their mobile phone joining, I think maybe Rec Room can be one option. The reason I'm I'm pitching this yeah. is because Rec Room has a really large user base. I also use Mozilla Hubs in the past, although mm -hmm. it's excellent in my opinion yeah it's the the barrier to entry is really really low you all you need is to have a computer that's it <laughs> i yeah. think that that's a, that's that's a really good option but uh i mean the user base wise rec room offers a little bit more i'm just just saying just saying just pitching this idea yeah also, yeah, yeah. You, Please. You, 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 yeah you you mentioned about this visual discomfort i think it's a nice segue to uh trigger more conversations because yeah, as you just mentioned, like in 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 rec room, you you feel a little bit dizzy if you use rec room quite often. Mm. It's it's yeah. because of the latency of of this thing. I mean, I don't know if you guys also observed it, but when you are in the Oculus Home, things look more fluent. Like as you yeah. rotate your head, things are less juddery, let's say. Um, whereas in the rec room, that's not the case. It's all because of the streaming. There's obviously a big large problem about streaming itself. Like yeah. streaming the data, yeah. what you're doing, what your avatar is doing, on those That's kind of right. stuff is it, it, it's it's causing some delays and uh, it's it's making things worse. Uh, that's that's yeah. Please, Jason. If, if yeah. I could add, so that's <laughs> definitely one contributor. Another is the movement scheme is not natural. So when you hit the the move button in the controller, you have a lot of um, intersensory conflict, um, and also the the spin, the rotate, um, also causes that. I actually have a student that's working on exactly doing the reduction, and you'll you'll notice that when you move the screen, uh, there's a like a mm -hmm. black aura around, that's actually yeah, yeah. designed yeah. to reduce simulation sickness. Uh, it's based off a pa yeah. paper from uh -huh. Stephen Finer, but so but yeah, there's multiple contributors I think. Yeah, let me also add to that with one more item. So the lenses that we have in the virtual reality headsets, they have their own distortions, and mm -hmm. we don't mm -hmm. have gaze tracking to actively compensate for that. Meaning like if you gaze to a different location in space <coughs> I'm sorry. If if you if you gaze to a different location in space you get a different geometric distortion. And it, it, it plays out like a, like if I if I move my head back and forth, it feels mm -hmm. like the edge of my field of view is wobbling. The entire virtual world is wobbling. It's just because of these geometric distortions. Mm. And as I change my gaze, things fall into different regions of the lens, and it's it's causing this weird visual artifact uh, to appear. Well, that's yeah. Woo. Okay. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> yeah. So simulation Thanks. sickness is definitely one, one issue. So Mera, so, so you want to explore, yeah. if I understand correctly, you want to explore how you can create environments for education in virtual reality. Is, is that a correct that's understanding right. of what you're up to? Okay. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, cool. And so what is in important future, in case mm -hmm. of, uh, sorry, um, what's important in my case is accessibility. So students should be able to access that as easily as possible mm. and also um, if it's not like so much device dependent, it'll be the best mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in my case. Because, gotcha. so, well, imagine like you have 200 students and <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> you won't be able to provide a headset for each, so that will mm -hmm. be a problem. So choosing something that's cross-platform, in my case, I think would work the best. Gotcha. Incidentally, Is Rec there Room... any other mm -hmm. accessibility? Oh, sorry, please go ahead. I was just going to say, it mentioned Rec Room is also cross-platform. Cross you can use it on a, a Okay, cool. Well. Go ahead. So I was going to ask, like, is there any other accessibility issues in your list? Like, I understand that, yes, you want people to jump to a platform from any device that they have. But is, is there anything else beyond beyond that like in education do you do you require for, for example a certain type of game controller mm -hmm. or input or sensors or like can you also elaborate on that uh, 
I don't know how much this point I want to bring up is related to what you're looking for, but actually when we tried out Engage, we found out that with the account that I had, the pro, like individual paid kind of account I had, I couldn't create um, uh, like persistent rooms or sessions that would be there the whole time for the students to hop in and out anytime they wanted to and use the like the immersive kind of media or any kind of content that I would put in there or that they would create on their own so this was a problem in the past because if you wanted if I wanted to use engage like that I had to be on an institutional account whereas with something like the hubs or maybe with rec room too I don't know you could have your own private link and space and it will stay there forever unless you close that room um, this is I think one of the issues that I had encountered when using engage that's why we switched to hubs recently uh, hmm, hmm. Um, yeah, so you want to be able to have a private room, first of all. Uh, so if you're holding a class, you don't want the class to be disrupted by uh, strangers. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> that's one issue. <laughs> and being able to create your own private space is one thing. And also making sure that it doesn't disappear uh, right. yeah. um, is another. Yeah. yeah. So y y you want them, you want the rooms to stay because you want the rooms to be available for multiple sessions. Like maybe you create something in the room and you want the others yeah. to see in the next session. Is is that a good reason or? Exactly. Or you want to create some sort of like say on-demand content so that people hmm. could access it at their own convenience and view it anytime they wanted to or add something to that uh, like room or whatever virtual space that you provide for them. So making yeah. sure that it's persistent, persistency is another issue. Yeah, it, it sounds like, you know, going to school off hours, like, <laughs> and getting your books and so on, you know, it, it feels the same in terms yeah. of experience, right? Mm -hmm. Like going there just to see, you know, what has happened in the previous session, what they left and, and those kind of things observing. I think it's, it, exactly. it is, it's an interesting thing. It has an analogy to real world, I would say. Yeah, yeah exactly. Or for things like, say experiential learning or like exploratory learning kind of things I think you want people to sometimes go into a space discover or figure out things on their own so in that case y you want your space to be persistent yeah, that's agreed. one thing I'd notice so when, when you say education are you also mm -hmm. covering like like what what levels of education should I be thinking of like is it are we t do you have a target group or like are we talking about graduate students are we talking about primary school students like wh wh who is the target audience in my case I think my target would be students in higher education so university students perhaps mm, most potentially undergraduate students I would say so if I happen mm -hmm. to teach, say, language classes, I'd be mostly dealing with uh, undergrad students. Yeah. Yeah, very good. So that's the target group I have in mind, yeah. yeah. Schools, I think, would be less open to things like that because of privacy issues, especially here in Japan. Mm. Um, even something like Zoom <laughs> would sound threatening <laughs> to them. So. <laughs> So getting things implemented in school is not very in schools is not very easy. You need sometimes to get the principal's uh, agreement. Also, sometimes the board of education may be mm. involved. So mm. it's a lot of hassle. But uh, higher education universities, I think you have a um, like uh, you you have an open hand in <laughs> doing what you want to do yeah. more often than you do in schools. That's super important um, something topic too. Something a little bit related, but also o off the topic. I think uh, I'm all, all, always feeling about like something is wrong with the virtual conferences. I, I think it's mm -hmm. part of education, in my opinion. Uh, like things like, for example, uh, poster sessions. The yeah. other day, I was reading some tweets about um, poster session at CVPR, one of the major conferences in in, mm -hmm. in computer vision machine machine learning community. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh, one person was saying like we waited for a day for someone to you know appear wow. as a guest and so that we can mm -hmm. just you know introduce our poster and so on but mm -hmm. nobody came so, oh my <laughs> and it's one of these yeah. conferences it's one of these conferences like you have typically if it's a physical conference yeah that person would probably be speaking to a hundred different people mm -hmm. 
So yeah. obviously there's some, you know, bad planning there, like um, people are wasting their times, like just waiting. <laughs> and and I, I'm wondering if there can be like, you know, on-demand type of events or like on-demand type of like education. I think conferences are kind of an extension to education. That's why I'm bringing this up. Yeah. Like, do you see the future in, 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 uh, in that direction or do you think this is a bad idea? Um, well, I think in that case, in case of like total on-demand kind of content that's available to people anytime they want to go to and browse, um, it would need a little bit of, I would say, should I call it self-organization, self-regulated behavior to make sure that mm -hmm. people actually get to go to see that content. So in a fa in face-to-face -face events, because you travel to go there, even though you may skip some parts of the event, you tend to go at least to part of them. But in online conferences, I have also had the experience so far, you tend to have the thing going on in the background and you sometimes get busy with other stuff you're doing. So mm -hmm. I would say it partly depends on um, how motivated or how engaged you are with the stuff. So having it on demand does not always mean that you you get a good number of people. It depends on the participants, like so many factors at work, I would say. It's hard to <laughs> uh, reach a conclusion, but yeah. Um, I, yeah. So it, it, is, it, is it like, so I'm try just trying to describe the problem here. Sure. Uh, so are, are you saying then people are less focused on virtual content therefore like they are not as structured in their you know communications when it comes to virtual reality or or virtual conferences or because it's something it can run in the background right like as you just said yeah. like i can do my work and maybe i can watch something in the background some some talk or something like that um is 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 this, yeah. is this a good problem description like I, I'm, I'm not sure if i'm giving you guys a good description but uh, yeah in this case i think vr would have the advantage of uh, uh, like cutting off all those real world distractions so if you really come to a vr venue uh, you would be doing this only so you can't look at your phone or do your work in the background this is i would say one benefit of doing stuff in vr <laughs> in my opinion, because hmm. yeah. once I'm here, I can't do anything else. Maybe I can slightly <laughs> sometimes look at my watch or <laughs> like check notifications, but that's all I can do in the middle and uh, while I'm being in, uh, like here. Yeah, and yeah. if you leave, if you take off your display, generally people will know that you're sort of away from keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Well, we have already identified some problems, I think, Jason. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, for <laughs> sure. like, uh, <laughs> we, yeah. So uh, maybe we can switch gears to a ne to the next person. Um, okay, Jason, would you like to would you like to introduce introduce one of your projects to us? Uh, yeah, sure. Or maybe uh, correct. Do you wanna wanna switch Osaka UCL? Take turns. It's up to you. It's up to you. It uh, works for me. Yeah. Let's. Uh, <laughs> it's yeah. is it Korei or Korai? How do you pronounce your name again? Uh, Korai. 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 Maybe you wanna go first. Yeah. Uh, either one is okay. Uh, so actually, for me, uh, I didn't quite study VR. I mean, I I, I don't have hands-on experience on VR, uh, but uh, mostly I, uh, as I mentioned before, so I just used a couple of applications with them. Uh, so regarding uh, VR virtual reality, I uh, I believe I cannot say any projects that I'm working on right now, but. Uh, uh, if you wish, I can uh, I can uh, uh, comment on my recent projects regarding holography, but sure. uh, I don't know whether it's an appropriate place for that. So, um, yeah, maybe um, just a brief summary, and if it has any applications towards VR or or education. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, <laughs> not really. Uh, so. Uh, Basically, I uh, worked on some uh, optical setups and uh, algorithms. So, uh, besides then, the application of holography on some ophthalmology cases. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I I quite felt uh, different out of topic right now. But mm -hmm. uh, Korai, do you mind if I suggest you maybe you can <laughs> uh, you know 
relate your project to VR by talking more about Virgin's accommodation conflict and how it's related yeah. to holography? Yeah. Yeah, sh sure, sure, Ojam, I, I can do that. Uh, so actually, in I mean, we are believing that uh, the in our group, we are believing that the holography would eventually provide the uh, best possible solution to providing the three dimension. Uh, 3D contents on uh, digital platforms. So uh, we are mostly focusing on that because uh, it promises uh, to enable all of the human visual uh, cues, such as, for example, accommodation of versions. Uh, for our case, uh, as I know, I'm sure you already know, but the the main problem with the VR and the other uh, computational displays, other than the light field technologies is basically the mismatch between the focus queue and accommodation which causes a major problem in vr headsets mm -hmm. uh, for example i'm uh, experiencing uh, the that problem on uh, virtual uh, reality headsets already uh, so mm -hmm. in holography basically we can match the accommodation and the focus cues uh, while displaying the uh, digital content the virtual contents so uh, also we can provide some natural focus cues that uh, some different depth resolutions and with some uh, natural blur uh, i don't uh, yeah not I, I mean there are some research i already read some couple of research papers regarding that issue on vr but uh, it, commercially i was not able to use any kind of device that can provide all of these uh, systems uh, all of these uh, a, a solution to all of these problems in uh, in a headset. So uh, I'm curious whether uh, the virtual reality uh, will be enough. I mean, the applications, uh, the approaches in VR uh, would be enough to uh, solve all of these problems uh, regarding the representing all of the cues that a human visual system can uh, mm. differentiate. Okay. Yeah, we. So we, guys, we that. I, <laughs> good. So uh, maybe one thing, Corai, talk a little bit more about. He mentioned two things: accommodation and virgins. Um, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with those two terms. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Corai can give us an introduction about like what is accommodation, what is iVergence. Yeah. Can you, can you talk about that too? Yeah. Sure. Sure, Hojan. Uh, for, uh, for example, I mean, uh, I can. When you are uh, trying to see uh, uh, in real world uh, object, uh, your uh, muscles, the muscles in your eye, basically they contract and uh, move your eye uh, in order to focus uh, some object that is located in a, a finite distance. Uh, but in a traditional 3D displays, uh, in case of VR2, uh, you are basically always focusing on the same plane and because the display is on the same plane but the uh, uh, digital content the objects they want to represent are basically on a different depth level for example uh, when you are looking at uh, uh, this rec room right now uh, you are actually seeing everything on a single plane but uh, the objects for example as you guys are staying uh, on different depth planes so my eye actually feels some kind of strain uh, due to that mismatch between the focus cue and the, uh, the accommodation, the, and that causes the uh, the mismatch between the virgins and the accommodation. Very good explanation. And holography <laughs> kind of <laughs> holography kind of promises to create images at different depth levels, like because it's just what I said, like you can change your accommodation meaning the focus of your lens in in your eye mm -hmm. and um in the, in the real world you do this quite often because you look at different objects in depth, different depth planes as you do that your eyes are rotating inwards like this to look at things right but in the vr or you know. 3d cinema everything is looking sharp at the screen your eyes are rotating on some virtual objects but even if you change your focus since everything looks sharp at the screen but not in the other planes it's giving you some unnatural experience where you feel dizzy because there's a mismatch between where things are sharp in reality and 
where you're looking at in depth with your virgins. So this is the biggest problem. That's why people are feeling dizzy when they interact with things that are close to their uh, faces, mm -hmm. like arms length. Um, this this is the major problem in here. Please, Jason. Yeah, so I actually have a, a question about that, which is maybe it's sort of an unanswered question in research. So when I'm looking at something, let's say 20 meters away, and it's um, mm -hmm. it's how should I say it should be in focus, and then something I look at something nearby, uh, and it should. Or, oh, sorry. Hold on. Let me let me rephrase that. So. If I'm looking at something close on the screen and something uh, in the wrong plane is out of focus, uh, I can definitely see that causing uh, conflict. Mm -hmm. However, if the screen, if everything is always in focus, does that cause the same type of conflict? And is, is there evidence for that? Or is, it, is that really That's... okay? That's a great question. There are two papers on this. Um, these type of displays that you just described, like where everything looks sharp at every distance. Mm -hmm. So they are they are like they are always in focus displays. Mm -hmm. So at every mm -hmm. depth plane, you get a sharp image. Right. Oh, of course, there is one thing to think about here. Like it's not only about providing the accommodation. There are other depth cues that one has to think about. Like blur itself is a depth cue. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Marty Banks has a paper on this. He is discussing about how color blur, blurring different colors, helping us to accommodate on different things mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in different depth planes. So, a true 3D pipeline, let's say, if you use an inf always in focus display, mm -hmm. has to account for that. Meaning, like, I al always need to know where you're looking at but what and if, blur mm -hmm. things that you're not looking at correctly so that I give you a realistic impression of a 3D scene. But what if you don't have to accommodate though? So that's the accommodation um, version's mismatch is because something at two meters requires a different, the, the, the optical plane is let's say at one meter, but the correct. virtual object is at 20 meters. Mm -hmm. But if you, yeah. mm -hmm. if you have that always in focus, then your accommodation should always be correct, right? Yeah. One, one parenthesis about the example you just mm -hmm. gave, mm -hmm. uh, we, I think the accommodation versions conflict matters at an arm's length. Mm -hmm. So if your display is one meter away from you, and if you're looking at an object, let's like, say, very close by, mm -hmm. things start to look really, really fuzzy, and it confuses you because, oh, right. you know, you're right. having a strong virgins, but your accommodation is at some other plane, which is one meters. Mm -hmm. That's the case where people feel mm -hmm. mostly dizzy. About, about places like infinite uh, distances, mm -hmm. I think that's a less, less of a problem. But it's still a problem. I, I'm not saying that it's not a problem. It's still a problem, but the strongest uh, conflict appears in the arm's length. I see, I see. Back to your question see. about, you know, all, being always in focus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, as I said, uh, it's not only about accommodation. If you if we truly want to provide very realistic visuals, and mimic the real world in terms of all the depth cues, mm -hmm. like pictorial cues and, and so on, mm -hmm. we need the blur. We gotcha. need the blur so that we give the realistic impression. Uh, but of course, like if you have an always in focus display without a gaze tracker, um, yeah, everything will look sh sharp all the time at all places, <laughs> and it, it it will look a little bit weird, you know, like yeah. it's like looking at every depth plane and they are all looking sharp. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, speaking of simulation sickness, my eyes are actually experiencing a little bit of fatigue. Maybe this is a good time for a 15 minute <laughs> break and then we can, uh, maybe Khan and I can mm, yeah. talk about our, our stuff as well. Sure. Shall we yeah. reconvene yeah. in 15 cool. minutes then? At, uh, yeah, yeah 15 Sounds minutes in, in our respective time zones. Okay, <laughs> that's good. Okay, okay. very I'll good. We'll be Sounds back good. in 15 minutes. Um, just a quick note. I need to leave by six at the longest. Uh, so <laughs> in 50 minutes. So. From your time, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Would, yeah. No worries. Would you like uh, to? Okay. Would you like to maybe go for fifteen more minutes and then stop? Because she will be, you know. Uh, I'm just suggesting. It's it's up to you, Jason. <laughs> um. That's a, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. In that case, I'll just put the display on top of my head and let my eyes rest. Um. <laughs> and, right. and yeah. Just okay. Listen <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah. So.
Jason, oh, would you like actually. to go next? Yeah, okay. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> you look funny. Oh, you know, I can look at my Jason, monitor. where are you looking at, man? <laughs> I'm, <laughs> actually, I'm looking. I can see I can see you all on my monitor, monitor right now, which is, oh, you know what? Actually, it's really nice. Yeah, cool. I can switch very easily. Um, yeah, okay. So yeah. Yeah. one of my projects, I'll give you sort of the story behind it. So um, imagine you have a, a an elementary or middle, uh, middle school student. And when the student goes home, um, his parents drink quite a bit. Um, every so often mm -hmm. they, they yell at him, and not very nice to him, and maybe he lives in a poor community or something. And then when he goes to school, um, he, there are some bullies. And this really disrupts his studies, his ability to learn, his ability to interact with people. Um, mm -hmm. But in general, if people, if, if children like that can develop good friendships and good relationships um, outside of the family or, or um, outside of those, those bullying people, they have a lot better success in learning and in life. So my goal is to alleviate some of those, um, that lack of interaction by creating virtual avatars that sync up or create symbiotic relationships with children or learners so that they can learn better, so that they can have more stable mental states and um, generally better lives. And the goal is to use artificial intelligence and augmented reality to create such artificial agents. And yeah, that's, that's the, the story in a, in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I feel like this is the most, let's say, if, if I want to rank, you know, projects in terms of importance, like, yes, the technical projects are, are also important, but what you're doing is highly important because <laughs> you're helping people uh, at, at another <laughs> level, right? So it's like you're resolving real world problems, whereas in many other cases, people are trying mm -hmm. to resolve case things that are likely to happen in the future, you know? <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, in, in that sense, this, this is a very helpful project to the society, right? So, so far, did you, were you able to, you know, find some subjects or like, how does a research like that look like? Do you have mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. find subjects first or like, do you have to prepare some user interface before finding people? Yeah. How does it look like? What, what kind of research uh, planning you have to do mm -hmm. in that ca case? Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, so it's a huge, huge problem with many, many facets. Um, but I think most everybody has had some type of hardship during learning at some point, uh, having being bullied or maybe one mm -hmm. parent is not such a, you know, doesn't really compliment or encourage that person. So, so most people have some, some problem of some sort. And rather than mm -hmm. going out and seeking people who have really, let's say, a, you know, have experienced abuse mm -hmm. or something like that, it's, I think it's more about finding what is, imp what individual problems there are, whatever they might be and um, learning how people respond in terms of their emotional state. So if you experience bullying, mm -hmm. for example, um, you know, you probably become sad or frustrated. And uh, from a research perspective, um, the way we're approaching it is to try and generate some very mild, mildly frustrating states. So for example, with very difficult math problems or with some games that are, are very uh, like y you try to play the game and you die instantly or something or mm -hmm. you, you know it's it's not easy to play <laughs> and maybe not so fun to play uh, and generate regenerate um, just a, a, a small extent some of those frustrating states and then use eye tracking within those games to classify when the person is frustrated uh, versus when they're succeeding for example um, mm. and then the, the avatar and, and designing the avatar and how the avatar responds to those frustration states or success states is sort of the next step in the research. So, um, so yeah, um, generate some very mildly frustrating things, classify those times using eye tracking and other biosensors, uh, and then, uh, deal with them, provide uh, adaptive feedback for that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it makes yeah, perfect cool. sense. And I, I also want to ask, like, I think if I can be helpful to your research in any means, I think the immediate thing I can I can be helpful about is classification part, where mm -hmm. you describe like gaze tracking and finding people's gazes and then just using that data, among with some labels probably, like 
I don't know how you can measure, for example, frustration of a person. Like, mm -hmm. is there is there a measure mm -hmm. that relates gaze of a person, gaze trajectory of a person, or like gaze moment of a person to frustration or like other feelings, or is it something a manual mm -hmm. process? You find out this is the time that person is getting frustrated. Here is the label frustration. Yeah. Is yeah. It, how, how does it work? What, what is the data collection process? So yeah, it's um, unfortunately it's sort of few and far between in terms of frustration. Um, what we, the easiest way we found to do it is to give them a, a frustrating button. Like imagine a big red button that says I'm frustrated mm -hmm. and just have them push it whenever mm -hmm. the instant that they get frustrated, like, ah, oh, God, this sucks. And then we have a, a ground truth for when they're frustrated versus not essentially. Uh, but there is mm -hmm. some evidence, so like pupil size, especially pupilometry, and the irregular dilation of the pupil um, corresponds mm -hmm. to emotional states, a variety of different emotional states. But typically when you get emotional, whether it's anger, anger, frustration, sadness, pain also causes this, the pupil dilates in a way different than it responds to light. Um, or dilates or, or uh, contracts irregularly, essentially. Um, so there's some evidence for that. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to classify that, but yeah, I mean, definitely if you have some ideas about what type of neural networks or what type of machine learning techniques we could use to classify that data mm -hmm. over time, uh, window size, uh, you know, to what, how should I say, what frequency does the tracker need to be to get good accurate data? Um, that's definitely a, a challenge for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I believe in what you just said because like I'm thinking about like if I get surprised for example of course my uh, iris will dilate mm -hmm. and that's an indicator of me getting surprised right that's a common response of a human being right mm -hmm. uh, it, it's embedded in our <laughs> let's say mechanisms mm -hmm. and, and and so on so mm -hmm. in that respect I believe there must be some kind of connection between the people size and how people are feeling like mm -hmm. fatigue or like I don't know like frustration and so on that's that makes completely sense to me mm. um, um, yeah I, I can be very much helpful to your research if, if you think like you can we can come up with a process for data collection I can help you with the machine learning side if you if you okay. think it's it's a good yeah, collaboration I, opportunity <laughs> of course yeah. you're already on the ground cool. so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. okay cool cool but yeah so is it six already in Japan or? It is five fifteen. Oh no, yeah. Five fifteen. Okay, we have like forty five minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Roughly, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought I thought like we have fifteen minutes to six, so that's why I was proposing uh, to. Oh, no. <laughs> sorry for the confusion. <laughs> I apologize for this. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe if you like, we can take a fifteen minutes break now, and then I, when we come yeah, back, yeah. I can talk about my project. Perfect. If you like. Yeah, yeah, sounds good. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. Okay, see you okay. in fifteen yeah. minutes then. Oh, okay, sounds good. Thank See you in 15 minutes. Okay. Bye. I'm I'm going to stay here and leave the the room open. <laughs>